Let the Spirit of God begin to rise in your head. Have liberty, O God. That even as you surrender to your will, God, let you and you alone, God, reign in our life. Let our dependence totally on you. Father, we give you all glory. We give you all glory. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you for the privilege that we can come to worship you, God. Together, O God. In this place, O God, Father, we know that this even even not in our midst, God, we know you are there with us, Father, because you deserve all glory and honor. And we thank you, God, that if you will begin, that even if you will be given us, God, this privilege, God, to be in your presence, to be in one company, God. In the days of here, God, that you will begin to draw in, God. More and more your people will gather together, God, because you know, God, it is what the enemy has done. You cannot hold back, God. You from your people, God, to gather, God, because to be one this God, that we can worship you, God, together, together, as one voice, God, to give you all the glory, to worship you, to do your will, God, but it is to please your heart, God, and we desire, God, only what that pleases you, God, not for our sake, God, but for your, what is in your heart, that you desire only to please you, God, grant us the grace, to walk in obedience to Grant us the grace to understand your ways, because you know, your ways are higher than ours. We no longer rely on our own ways, in our God, but we rely on your spirit. Jesus, Yara, Masundi, Yara, Masundi, Yara, Masundi. Oh, Ria, Masundi, Yara, Masundi, Yara, Masundi, Yara, Masundi. Oh, Rindi, Isi, Yara, Yara, Masundi. Oh, Shindi, Yara, Masundi, Yara, Masundi. Glory to the faithful one. Glory to the 
that they let revival of our flow begin to stir in the hearts of your people. That your fire, oh God, begin to burn so deep, oh God, that you know, oh God, that we are changed, oh God, because in time of need, that you, Lord, oh God, we know that you will rise, and that you will above every, we will rise together with you, above every circumstance, oh God. We call you, oh God, because you have won the victory, oh God, that you will have defeated the enemy, oh God. That we are victorious in you, oh God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Mount Christine. Mountains and still be blue. Struggles and still be blue. God, we believe. Yes, we can see. The wonders are still what you guys are going on. Mountains are still be blue. Mountains are still be blue. Stronghold I still be the lose. God we believe, God we believe. Yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. We are here for you. Yes, Lord, come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts. Set our hearts. We are here for you. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here. We know mountains are still being moved. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being moved. God, we believe. Yes, we can say the mountains must do what you do. Bodies are still being raised. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. The wonders of still what you do. We are here for you. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts. Come and do what you do as we in the moon. Come and do what you do as we in the moon. Oh, 
Ah. Uh-huh. 
He is the God of Almighty. He is the creator of heaven and the earth. He is all. What a mighty God is serve. Amen? Amen? So for a while, we are going to look into Luke chapter 22, verse 32. Okay, Luke 22, 32. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. Strengthen your brethren. This is what Jesus was speaking to the disciples. I think of all the things that Jesus is concerned is our faith. Jesus is concerned about our faith. And often that he spoke to the disciples in various occasions where before the miracles happened in the lives of the people, he always mentioned these words, you of little faith or you of great faith. I don't have to tell, you know, so many times when Jesus performed the miracle, so many times this happened. We read in the word of God that Jesus uh, sorry, Abraham has this unshakable faith of God. And because of that, he could believe for a miracle. Supernatural miracles happened in his life. And true enough, he was blessed with a child at the old age. He had sister Sarah, his wife was blessed. No science can explain this. It's divine. It's divine miracle of God that happens to the lives of people who are connected to God. Church, you and I, when we are connected to God, right here, God will come and do the miracle in our life. He will come and answer us. Whatever situations you are here in now, in a COVID situation, I believe the most important word that we must concentrate is the word faith. The word faith, okay? The word must become reality. The word of God must become reality in our life. When, when the word of God is spoken, the spoken word has power. I believe that Abraham was waiting for many years for the child. But though he tell me that his prayers was answered, God has to, to bring us, you know, to that to that uh, picture of understanding God more. Or rather knowing God more. Such an intimately knowing God. That Abraham begin to show, uh, uh, sorry, God begin to show Abraham that he is the covenant God. And he told and he promised Abraham that in the old age, at this age, I will give you a son. And God truly blessed him with a son. Covered for making. Though it takes years, 23 years for the fulfillment of the word. But the prayers was answered. Sarah was conceived. At the old age, the Bible says that she bore a child to unbearing age, a bearing age as over. Who can believe that church? And because our God is a covenant God, maker. So all that interested what God is interested in us is that He wants us to pay attention to Him. Attention to Him and believe Him 100%. And when we read Hannah in the book, you know how Samuel was born? Hannah has such a faith in God. 
She go went into the temple of God. She went to the church, to the temple of God, and she as she cries to the Lord, and she breaks even the people invitation. The Nila and the Prophet was there, but he could, she could cry out to God. He said a prayer in her heart, and God heard her prayer, and as a result of that, Samuel was born, and she dedicated the son back to God. Samuel become the great prophet for the nation. Church, you and I must have such a faith that we must touch God with faith. We also meet the woman with the issue of the blood in Mark five thirty four. Just listen to this word. Jesus said to this woman. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So many people were at that time touching Jesus, but Jesus was touched by this woman's touch. This woman. Touch the garment of Jesus, and Jesus knows that she has such a faith in her heart. She break the people limitation also. If you don't care, you know people are stopping her from touching the garment of Jesus. For you and I, in order for us to have such a faith of God. Faith like God. I think the first important ingredient, important things that you and I must must know that you do not fear. You do not be afraid. Most of the time, when we pray, that whether our prayers can be answered or not, there's no doubt in her in her mind, and only believe. And always, Jesus emphasized this: only believe, you will enter into supernatural miracles, supernatural miracles, signs and wonders. It's going to happen in our midst in the coming days, because Jesus is interested in touching our life, and our faith level is going to be increased ever more. In Mark four fourteen, in verse thirty nine, we read like this: He arose and rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, "Peace, be still!" And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Verse fourteen, Jesus said to them, "Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith?" This is what Jesus asked. Mark chapter four, verse thirty-nine and fourteen. Mark chapter four, thirty-nine. Okay, where the we review the sea, where comes where we review the sea and the wind, ah, wind, and say to the sea. And Jesus said to them in verse forty, "Let you concentrate there. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith?" All we know is that Jesus is interested in us that we must have faith. He is interested in our life that we must come to God in such a great faith. And we do not be fearful. Today, many people are fearful of COVID nineteen. Many people are even, you know, uh, afraid. The thing is in them. But but and the word of God says that you must afraid, do not fear. How much faith? 
that you must have. And the Bible says that you must have God kind of faith. I believe Jesus had God kind of faith. That he could do many signs and wonders. The blind healed. The woman with the issue of the blood was healed instantly. The one such blind mental illness was healed. They walk. Many, many millions of miracles happened when Jesus was alive. That's why it's very important, even in Matthew chapter 14, verse 31 and 32. You can go back and meditate these verses. Say, do not doubt. Do not doubt. Be obedient. Do not doubt in your mind. He tells faith that is we cannot believe God fully. We cannot go, believe God fully. That's why we doubt. The Lord will come at the last hour to save us. Remember when Peter was walking on the water and he, and he believed that Jesus is coming towards him. He was walking towards him, church. But when, when he was walking on the water, suddenly there was a, the, the sea, uh, suddenly there were storms coming towards him. So he was afraid. And that's how Jesus said, you are a little way, come. I am Jesus, I'm coming to you. And he was almost sinking, and the last hour he stretched out his hand and saved him. Now, Jesus is so, he's, he's a miracle worker, he is a wonder working God. He is God who knows to answer us at the right time. What are you facing? What are you facing today? What do you want God to answer you? There are many, 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 many prayers. Many, many. Uh, we, we must know, you know, that we are, we are asking God for an answer. But God will see us through, through all this journey of our life. You, you will not understand now, but you will understand as you walk before God. In, in Matthew chapter 6 verse 30, Jesus said, You of little faith, many, many times he mentioned this here. You will see the manifestations of God in your lives more and more. When you are connected to Him every day, when your devotion is every day to Him, our our abiding, right? Our abiding, our abiding in Him, in His Word, in His life, in the Holy Spirit, that brings you closer to God. And when we are closer to God, when we are, our faith level is increasing every day, and we could communicate to Him. The frequency of heaven comes nearer to us. The frequency of heaven comes to us. And that is why we can experience signs and wonders in our life. We are not going to be afraid of the people in the world. We are called by God. We have been called by name. God calls us by name. You and I are so unique. You and I are so special that God has called us. That's why salvation is very powerful. He came to look for you. The Bible says that I did not choose God. God chose me. So salvation comes from God. That is why we are in this in this period of time of God save us. He, he took it out from the mighty clay. He put us in, added us into the kingdom of God. Now we are in the family of God and we are now living living the presence of the Lord every day. Amen? So that is why it's important. Alright? 
Now, Jesus, once in I begin to realize when I meditate upon these verses, I realize that Jesus was marveled. Many times he was marveled at the faith of the people. He was marveled. You know, nothing there but speak at this as it is there. You know, people are believing God, you know, for supernatural miracles to happen. When you and I please God and touch God and make our God happy, our prayers can be answered. This is the secret. Because when God is glad with us, our prayers is answered. There is one particular verse in, in the Proverbs 27, 11. I would like to, to turn to this text, right? Proverbs 27, 11. Let's turn to that. Proverbs 27, 11. You got it? Okay, 27, 11. It's a good, good to read the word of God. Alright, 27, 11. It says like this. My son, be wise and make my heart glad. Whose heart is that? My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him who reproaches me. You see, my son, be wise and my heart, make my heart glad. You and I must make our God happy, must make him glad. You know, Jesus was marveled. You know, when he was speaking to a centurion in Mark chapter 8, sorry, Matthew chapter 8 verse 13. You know the story of a centurion, how his faith was. He said, Jesus said to the centurion, alright? Jesus said to the centurion, right? Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And Bible says that Jesus was marveled at his faith. And he has found none of, none of people having such a great faith in that times. So you and I, you know, having that kind of faith in God, a faith that touches his heart, the words that we spoke. I want you to just concentrate on the words that we speak to God. How you speak to God. How you, how the words that we use to touch, touch his heart. And that is a time the signs and wonders happen, church. Signs and wonders happen the moment the word of God spoken to your mouth and you are declaring God touches. This is it. Jesus many times was marveled. In fact, the woman with the issue of the blood, she was, she was, you know, touching him. And why Jesus was so glad with that? Why she was healed instantly? Because Jesus saw the great faith that in her and he was uttering in her heart. Did she, did she spoke? Outside her nose, isn't it? She was thinking in her heart that even if I touch the crown of Jesus, I will be healed. And Jesus knows her heart. Why, church? Even secretly, you are you telling God your prayers. God will answer you because He sees your faith. What sort of faith you have in God today? Faith should not fail, church. Faith should not fail. More and more you get to know closer to Him. Get to know Jesus. How He comes to you in a very special way. Amen? So that is our God. Now, and in, uh, in verse 17, right, of the same uh, text, Chapter of Mark, uh, of Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, he said that the Bible says that he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Amen. Jesus himself took our infirmities. It has been spoken by the prophets. By the prophet Isaiah. He was spoken to the prophets. And now it becomes the fulfillment in the New Testament days. Alright? Now, whatever it is, I think Jesus
Jesus, I perceive Jesus is interested in our thought pattern. He is interested in our thought pattern. He is interested in how we think. He is interested in how we begin to speak. The words of faith that is, comes out from our, our mouth is very important. And whatever that you think here, right? Whatever that you think in your mind, positive or negative, if it is positive, you believe God. If it is negative, you are giving way to the enemy. Because the enemy is always shooting an arrow in your mind by negative thoughts. That is why our area of thoughts is very important. We must allow the Holy Spirit to cleanse our mind. Amen? Amen? So this is one of the things that I, I believe that this is the season and time that we must partake of the Holy Spirit. Right? Many words that you do, even though you don't understand these words, but you must partake. You see, when we were saved, we were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Remember? We were baptized with the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes to us, what it happens? The empowerment comes. So when God has touches you, the empowerment of God comes to you. You receive power from an oil. Amen. That is why the same power that was that was in Jesus now is on you. It transferred to you now. The Holy Spirit is in you. Now every one of us, Jesus, Holy Spirit is in us. That is why when we lay hands on the sick people, the sick people heal. Because Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. He was a saint that he was taken out to heaven when the Holy Spirit was given to us. So now, you know, I, I just wanted to share something, uh, you know, about a week ago, I think, uh, I can't remember, that I had a dream. In a dream, I was talking to a group of Christians, believers, and I, in a dream, I was talking to them, and uh, I, I was telling to them, I said, in order for you and I to experience signs and wonders and experience God in a very spiritual way, you must be 100% dependent on the Holy Spirit. I was just telling to a group of Christians, I did a dream. I said, 100% dependent on the Holy Spirit. What God is trying to tell us, what God is trying to tell me is that don't depend on yourself. This is what actually is 100% is from Jesus alone. He is the only one that's going to, to bring the healing to you. Bring down the healing to us. But our job is we must rise up with such a great faith and ask God and supernatural miracles will happen. Amen? So that is what the Spirit of God, the infilling of the Holy Spirit is very important. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is very important. Right, we receive the power from a time. Right? So life of the spirit is very important. Our life in spirit, in Romans chapter 8, chapter 7, you know, I have talked to you many times how we you know the life of our life of the spirit is very important. Now, one thing you must be very careful in this time that when your spirit is rising in God, in faith, to believing in God. The enemy comes to rob the spirit of faith from you by giving us negative thoughts, by giving you spirit of worriness, spirit of your fear. You see, this these things will happen to me or not? The sicknesses will come to me or not? The COVID virus is coming. So many people are, you know, uh, dying, and so many people are suffering. You know, will this sickness, you know, will affect me or not? All these things. COVID nineteen is just one thing only, but there are jobless people are crying out to God. So many problems. But you see, in all these things, we cry out to God. And God is so faithful to us. Is God faithful to us, church? God is faithful to each and every one of us. He's protected us and guarding us, blessed us. Even in this time of you know, lockdown, God has been faithful to us. God has answered our prayer. So our faith level has grown. Our faith level has increased. Amen. But always remember that your faith level, faith that the first thing that I talk to you about is faith, faith should not fail. Alright? So faith is very important. So for that to happen, alright, the enemy will come and rob the 
the spirit of faith in you, the deception, the spirit of deception is real. The Bible says in the last day the spirit of deception will come. But we have the standard, we have the we have the power to overcome. And Jesus will not let us enter into the sanctuary, you know, but Jesus will find a place of escape for us. We will not enter into the sanctuary, but there is a way to escape. So that's why we are privileged. We are privileged to live in this time. Difficult times will come. But I will never say that, you know, all the things that's all you can see. So many things are happening around us. The enemy always comes at still come and steal, come and rob or joy, or come and you know, make our lives so messy, come and you know, put a lot of wrong thoughts, negative thoughts in us until our faith drops. But today I challenge you tonight, as a church, as a people of God, let our faith arise to another level, to believe God, to please God. When you make our God glad, your answer, your prayer, to your, your prayers will be answered. Amen. Your prayers will be answered. Believe in His word. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 7, a very important verse, Jesus said to him, Jesus said to, to the people, said, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. Matthew chapter 8, verse 7, there's a, there's a time where, you know, let's turn to that, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, in verse uh, 7. Before that, before that, in verse 5. But now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him. It's a story of the centurion, okay? Centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. This is the word that Jesus spoke to the centurion. Today, I'm telling you, church, Jesus is telling to us, I will come. I will come to your situation. I will come and do the miracle for you. I will come and answer your prayers. Then he said what Centurion answered and said in verse 8, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. I want you to concentrate how the centurion's word pleases the heart of, us, the heart of Jesus. How we communicated to Jesus. How we speaking to Jesus is very important. How the, the faith, the, the word of faith that releases from God must touch God. How many of us want God to touch you tonight? How many of us want God to, to really come for you? He will come. Jesus said, I will come, all right? And this centurion believed that. And what happened? In verse 9, For I was a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this, go, and he goes, and another come, and he comes to my servant. Do this, and he does. And he said that, uh, in verse 11, and in verse, uh, uh, after he has spoken this, and Jesus was, what the word that Jesus uttered to him. When Jesus heard this, heard the centurion speaking the word of faith, with such a great faith in his heart, what's happening? He said, certainly I say it to you, I have not found such a great faith, not even in Israel. Jesus is interested in the great faith, church, not little faith, not the faith that saves that grows very. But Jesus is interested in great faith. And what happened in verse 11, he said, As, and I say to you, many will come from the east and west, sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And he was talking about the kingdom of heaven here. Yeah? And in verse 13, and Jesus said to a centurion, what did he say? Go your way. 
as you have believed, as you have believed, church, as you have believed, are you believing God today? As you have believed, amen, as you have believed, what's happening here? It, so let it be done for you. Let it be done for you. If you believe, let it be done to you. That's what Jesus said. And his servant was healed the same hour. Did Jesus go over there to see the servant? Did Jesus go there personally? No. He just sent his word. The Bible said that he sent his word and healed our diseases. He sent his word and healed our diseases. And that's what Jesus was telling us. Bible says that. He sends his word. At that very hour, she was healed. At the very hour, the servant was healed. Now, this centurion, he is not asking for healing for his own children. He's not asking, uh, you know, healing for 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 the his favorite ones or what, but for the servant. And Jesus knows that. And Jesus was Jesus was pleased with him. Jesus was pleased with the way that he spoke with the great faith. But you and I, we want to touch God. I pray that, you know, the words that we speak to Jesus, that we please his heart. And when we speak the word of faith, even from our hearts, our prayers can be answered. No matter how difficult situations in your life, God will come through for you. So today, stretch out your faith up and believe God for this to happen. Amen? So he said, I will come. If Jesus said, I will come and heal me, I will come. There's no doubt. No second thoughts. Amen? It will take time or what? It will take sometimes instant healing, sometimes slow healing, sometimes. But he said his word is true. Understand? His word is true. So believe in his word, right? So our response to God is very important. The way we speak is very important. The way we speak attracts God, church. The way we speak, the way we utter the word of faith will attract God. We want to attract God or not. So many times we want to attract his word. So many times we want to attract people. So many times we want to do things for people. Most people will say, acknowledge me or not. No, church, you must come to the place where God, I only want to please you. And God, if I please you, everything will come under. I don't have to worry because God is in charge. Try not to be a man pleaser. Try to be a God pleaser. So everything will come into perfect alignment in our lives. In fact, we respect people, we honor people, but above all, we know that it's God above us and He's the one who's going to answer us. Amen. Amen. And um, and there is one particular verse where uh, a story about a, wid a widow, a widow who prayed, who was uh, claiming, because she chose, claiming a judgment of her. Which is a widow to the judge. And she was so consistent, she persisted. She go and has, you know, again and again, she don't give it up until the judge himself and so kind of with her and gave the judgment to her in favor of her. And um, in that story, Jesus said, when I return, will I see such a great way in you? She was so persistent. She never gave it up. So, God, our God, is interested in us of having a great faith. I think the world needs this. The church needs this. How are we going to trust the people outside? It's all depending on the people of God like us. Amen? Alright, so get ready. The God of increase is in our ways. Do you believe that? The God of increase Papa has been talking, God of increase is in our face. He is going to give bring increase in our lives. Increase in every area. Increase, not only just in terms of number. Increase in terms of our passion in God. Increase in our our nature, transforming, you know, changing. We become more and more like, like Jesus. 
more and more like carrying, you know, God's character in us, passion for God. Amen. That when we touch God, we touch others. When we touch God with such a great faith, we touch others. That is why you don't give it up on anybody. You know, if you are if you are following up anybody, your friends, your friend believer, carry on. Just keep on speaking to them. Pray for them. Pray for them over the phone. And true enough, by the time you will come to the new season, in the right season, they will be saved. Amen. So God is going to move sovereignly in our ways. And you're going to ask God for such a faith you have, you inquire, you ask God, God, give me such a great faith, God. The moment you, you decide to have this great faith, it will happen to you, it will come to you. Not beyond or not, not having a great faith, you know, but Jesus said that you must have a great faith. Amen. Alright? So we must also declare the word of God. Declaration of the word of God is such a great way. So you are a good God. You are a miracle worker. You have done to the centurion. God, you will do that to me. You have done to Abraham. You know, you have done to Isaac. So many miracles. You have done, you have healed the blind. Say, you heal the lame. You know, all these words of God, you take that word of God and declare to that cause you have to declare into your life. And that's how your faith level is going to be increased. More and two, every day you do this in your life, something will happen. Amen? Hallelujah. And in, in closing, let's turn to Psalms 54. Psalms 54 is a beautiful psalm. I want to close with this psalm. Okay, in verse 1 it says that, Save me, O God, by your name. Save me, O God, by your name. And vindicate me by your strength. A person who walks very closely with God, David is the one who utters this word to God. I just want you to concentrate how he was talking to God. He said, save me, O God, by your name. We are not saved. We are not saved. We are, we are saved actually by Jesus' name. We bear his name. Understand? And in verse 2 he said, hear my prayer, O God. Look at this prayer. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. Is God listening to you, church? God is listening. Here, Levi is crying out and saying, Give ear to the words of my mouth. And in verse 4, Behold, God is my helper. Who is helper? God is my helper. The Lord is with those who uphold my life. Right? And in verse 6, I will freely sacrifice to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. And in verse 7, it says, For he has delivered me out of all trouble. He has delivered you, delivered me out of all trouble. Did, did Jesus, while he was performing, everyone I think millions of people were brought to him and many people bring the, the sick people to the right to Jesus and what the Bible says Jesus healed everybody. Jesus healed everyone. So it's signs and wonders. Here this verse is saying he David is going to say that he has delivered me out of all trouble. God will deliver us from all other troubled church today. Are you having any trouble? Are you, are you having an anxiety? I've spoken to you that if you have a great faith, God kind of faith, and when we come to God and declare the word of God as David says, save me God, save me, help me, hear my prayer God. How we must pray. Sometimes we do not know how we, how we ought to pray. This is how we pray. You take the book of Psalms and pray. You see? And strangers, you know, I give ear to the words of my mouth. 
Say, God, listen to my prayer. My, my nephew was sick. And then my brother called me no, to, to pray for him. The sickness says that there is no cure. It's not cancer, but there's no cure. It's only it can be controlled. I was challenging my, my brother, who is not a Christian. So I tell you, I believe, I believe God will heal him totally. I believe, I have a faith to believe that Jesus will heal him completely. Today he is resting in the house, but I believe he's going to go back to work. Already started working once in this. He's going to go back to work. Very young. And God has done a perfect will, perfect healing upon his mortal body. You see, there are many around us, our friends, our relatives, our brothers, our sisters, our nephews, everyone that was with God. And now, how are we going to touch one by one? How are we going to touch everyone, one by one at a time, by having such a great faith in our heart? So we, we do not have such a great faith, how to help others? So I believe that the first thing that Jesus even spoke to us, the first day in Luke 22, 32 said, faith should not fail. Faith will never fail us. If you have such a great faith, God will never fail us. So be strong in your faith. Gird up, you know, your side. Amen? And um, there's another thing. Verse, in verse 53, uh, Psalms 53 and verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 1 we can read. The full, uh, full Psalms 53, okay? Just now I ask you to read Psalms uh, 53, right? Psalms 54. Now let us turn to Psalms 53, verse 2. God looks down from heaven. Okay, maybe you can tell after me, you know, repeat after me, say, God looks down from heaven. Where is he looking us from? From heaven. Where is God church? In heaven. So God looks down from heaven about the children of men. Children of men are you and I. He's looking at us. Looking at us. Looking at children of men. He didn't say whether Christian or not Christian, huh? Did he say that? No. Everyone. To see if, to see if there are anyone who can understand who seek God. Who seek God, church? He is, David is telling this. Every one of them turn aside. They have together become corrupt. And there is none who does good and no one and not not one. And this these are the, the things that is happening in the end of the days, the end age. People are turning away from God. People are roaming away from God. COVID 19 has affected them so much. Church has not gathering. People are people are in fear. People are jobless. People are committing suicide. There is no hope. But here the word of God says, God is looking at us. He's not like He is looking at us. He said that God looks down from heaven upon the children of man to see if there are any who understand or who seek God. God is interested in us, in the, in the in man. He wants the man to seek him. So when you seek him, anybody who calls upon him, he will come and restore. He will come and heal. He will come and answer you. In the store when we read in Psalms 54, it said, when, when, Save me, O God, when I am troubled. Vindicate me, O God. No, you hear my prayer. God is interested. God is interested. He is actually wanting us to pay attention to God. All men to give attention to God. That's why he created men. Right? And that is why Jesus had paid the price in the cross of Calvary for us. He died for us on the cross of Calvary because to redeem the mankind. So Jesus has already redeemed all the mankind. So now the mankind only have to turn their hearts to God. Mankind, Jesus has already done 